SMT Nation, we are back. Nation Verizon achieves something pretty incredible. The speed and throughput they're able to produce on some of these connections is, is it's just bonkers. And you know what? In some ways, you know, they're already kind of doing some of this, right? 5.5 gigabits per second. That's really, really fast, right? 5,500 megabits per second. And they can do this on the commercial network. You can actually connect your personal device and get this type of speed. But let's take a look at this achievement here from Verizon. I'll link the article for you guys, their press release, so you can check out some of the details for yourself. All right, so 5.5 uh, gigabits per second download speed. To me, you know, that, that basically says, you know, you got yourself like fiber-like wireless connections, right? All right, let's take a look at how they achieved it for some of the technicals. Samsung Electronics. That, so that tells me that's the radio gear, right? So we're talking about like the cell tower type of equipment. And they did it with a MediaTek processor. Okay, so that means they, they didn't go with Qualcomm for whatever reason. They did it with a MediaTek. And I think that's strategic, right? Uh, let me go ahead and zoom this in a little bit in case you guys are trying to read part of it possibly. Okay, um, it says here they used multiple channels of both FDD and TDD spectrum. All right, so for those of you that know, these designations is, is how certain spectrum, certain radio frequencies get identified uh, in, in the wireless world. It says all of it here or sub-6 gigahertz spectrum. So this means that this was not millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is, you know, like 24, 28, 39 gigahertz, super, super high frequencies that don't travel very far. Uh, so they used sub-6 gigahertz, which tells me they were using mid-band spectrum, which has the potential to travel pretty far. So that gives you the idea that they were trying to show what they can do with their mid-band holdings. Um, looking for specific bands here. Okay, they're mentioned. Oh, and it gives us the bandwidth. All right, cool. So PCS, which is 1900. And then you got the 850, which is a low band. So PCS, a mid band. Uh, 850, a low band. AWS, another mid band. Um, that's like 1700, 2100. And then CBRS is 3550. A little bit low power. Uh, you guys know about band 48. Uh, and then you have C band which is the 3700, the N77 piece. Now what they did there, it says aggregated, which means they combined all those channels together for a grand total of 350 megahertz of bandwidth. Okay, so 350 megahertz of bandwidth, and they were able to produce 5.5 gigabits per second in downlink speed, which is very, very fast. All right, now um, very typically Verizon has uh, somewhere between 5 and 15 megahertz of PCS. They have between 10 and 20 megahertz of 850. AWS, they'll have like 20, possibly 40, I guess, if they combine this in trial. Uh, CBRS, mm, that's probably 80, because uh, I think they have licensed and unlicensed that they use, and then C-band. In my market, they have 140. In most markets, they have 160. In some markets, they have 200. Okay, so whatever their configurations were in terms of total bandwidth, it added up to 350, however that broke down. Right, so a bulk of the throughput is coming from the C-band piece. The reason why this is important is because they're able to do this through their VRAN platform. That's a big piece of what they do with respect to their network. Uh, tens of thousands of cell sites across the country are VRAN enabled and VRAN capable. So Verizon flexing a little bit here, trying to show what they could do. Now, this doesn't really mean anything unless you could put it on the commercial network. But Verizon is very capable of getting this live on the network and performing this across thousands of cell sites. So what would this do for people? You know, this is throughput. This is speed that could be monetized. This is what you could see them do with home broadband. This is what you could see them do with mobility. Uh, providing throughput in the lower frequencies means it has reach. And you could see them do this to support venues. You could see them use this to support neighborhoods, uh, you know, high density, urban, suburban, like there's a lot of potential use cases and applications for this type of throughput. When would we expect to see this? Uh, this, this is something they could achieve like legitimately 
in 2025. Um, now, it doesn't, I don't know if it said it was like SA 5G or whatever. I, I'm looking here. I, I don't really see a mention of it. Six component carriers just means six carrier aggregation, which is why I think they did the, uh, the MediaTek processor chipset because they needed the six component carriers. So to me, this tells me it's putting all this on 5G NR. Uh, which I don't think galaxies can do that yet. I think they do five carrier component carrier, um, the galaxies with Qualcomm. Uh, so we'll see what that's all about, but this is not a dream folks. This can be on the commercial network very, very soon. So we'll look out for it. It's going to be important for it to go live, right? Laboratory trials and all that's cool, but we got to see it happen in the real world. The same, same type of story i always tell about you know t-mobile whenever they share all these cool things they do in the lab you got to put it to commercial use on the network so commercial users can use it all right let's see what happens but this is pretty impressive good stuff from verizon sound off in the comment section let me know what you guys think about this excited for this how soon before we get it what do you think do all the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard like and share our videos subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the smt We'll see you guys on the next video.